Rothman Tech Tips. I'm here with Mark Peters. Mark, thank you for jumping on the program today. Uh, Mark is going to talk about cybersecurity. So, Mark, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you, Matt. So, uh, before we start here, this is your your typical uh, you know DC conversation. Mark is is a cybersecurity consultant, and he's wearing his suit and tie, looking very dapper. Me, I'm just a blogger, so I'm wearing my Bullets jersey. Uh, the Washington Wizards are in the playoffs, so I'm going to the game tonight. I'm very excited. That's why I'm wearing my old school Washington Bullets jersey, and I guess I'm the blogger, so that's how I dress. But Mark is the uh, the cybersecurity consultant, looking very dapper. So, Mark, thank you for uh, for coming on the program today. Please tell me, tell my audience about cybersecurity. What is it? What should we know about it? What are the trends in cybersecurity? Certainly. Uh, well, just, uh, just you know, what is it? Uh, very quickly, uh, it's very simply just securing your information technology. So uh, it, we usually break that down into three pieces: uh, accessibility, accessibility, um, confidentiality, and integrity. So you know, very quickly, um, your information technology has to be accessible to you. Uh, a, a cyber hacker could, in theory, uh, deny you service or damage your information technology. Um, confidentiality being the second piece, that is, uh, you want your information private. Uh, it could be uh, damaging to you if certain information is stolen. Uh, and then lastly, integrity, which means that they can't change that information. And uh, a great example of that would be uh, something the public is aware of when people hijack somebody's website. Uh, maybe a very public company, maybe a government government agency, and change the information on the website for everybody to see. So that would be a case of changing the data or uh, uh, interfering with the integrity of the data. So accessibility, uh, uh, confidentiality, and integrity. Oh wow! Well, that's great. And you know, and I, I think of security, and you mentioned you know integrity and and people taking over websites. There's so many cyber criminals out there taking over websites, trying to access your data, really trying to do um, bad things. So, what are you know people like you, cybersecurity? You know, what are you guys doing to counteract some of these attacks? Oh well, it, it, it's an endless uh, uh, set of uh, uh, advancements and, and things that we're working on. Uh, there's a concept called the kill chain, and uh, it's a, a seven-step process that, that, through a lot of analysis, we've uncovered the basic strategy that a sophisticated hacker would use to go through uh, the seven steps, you know, gathering information about you, uh, trying to penetrate your defenses, infiltrating your systems, uh, uh, being able to control your systems, exfiltrating data from it are some of the examples of some of those steps. So, so understanding uh, or better understanding that process is helping us to therefore better uh, protect against that process and in fact better detect when that process is in progress. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, the big efforts right now. Um, I would say maybe a second one uh, for the large organizations uh, is uh, something called continuous monitoring and that is uh, uh, the ability to constantly check to make sure that your defenses are up to code, up to the correct revision, operating the way they're supposed to be uh, uh, on a full-time basis, as opposed to setting up your security in a month later, coming back and, and, and maybe taking a look to make sure it's okay. Uh, which when I'm thinking about, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mark, when I'm thinking about this monitoring, uh, you know what comes to mind to me is uh, some some level of alerts, notifications. If there is a potential breach, if there is something that is out of the norm when it comes to your network, when it comes to your data, you as a security person is going to get some sort of alert, notification, email. Please walk us through that process. Uh, well, sure. So uh, you know, again, th these things are constantly evolving into how we defend against them, how we alert, or how do we detect them. And how do we get alerted to them? So, you know, obviously it depends on whether we're talking about a large organization uh, or an individual, of course. Um, you know, from the individual standpoint, you, you might find out over the news, which uh, I happen to be one of the people that got affected by the target, uh, uh, where they stole the credit card information. Oh, and really? I, and, yeah, I did. And I had immediately go and, you know, cancel that card and, and get a new card. But I just happened to be watching the news on the day that it broke. And, and did that. And the question in that case is how do you notify you know, 20 million people uh, in an effective way that they got hacked? And there really is no good way. The only way you can really do that is through the news media, unfortunately. But you know, if you've got an organization, then you've got, you put policies and procedures in place to make sure that everybody properly gets notified. Excellent. So 
you know, right now I know we're in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm sure you work with the federal government in some way, shape, or form. What are the big federal cybersecurity initiatives out there? What are the, what are the things that, you know, other federal contractors like you are, 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 are have in mind or are really talking to, to these agencies about? Uh, yeah, it's several things. You know, one of the biggest problems is uh, the number of different tools and technologies that we use to protect information technology. And there's really an effort now to sort of bring that all together under one uh, platform and integrate all that data. A great example is uh, the technologies used to uh, uh, detect uh, an incident and the technologies used to respond to, uh, which we would call incident response, uh, just aren't connected. So there's a lot of manual process of those teams talking to each other and, and handing each other files and data. Well, obviously that slows things down. So uh, integration of these technologies so that they work uh, better, they work faster, and of course we can start to do interesting things at this point like uh, big data analytics on all the information that comes in so we can better correlate and detect uh, you know, unusual activity. Okay, great. So if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, there's a lot of different moving pieces, different technologies to detect and certain uh, technologies to really come in and remedy the solution. And you see those merging, coming under one umbrella, one single vendor, one single piece of uh, technology to work with there. Yeah, if possible. I mean, that would be the ideal. How far we get, I don't know. But certainly that's one of the big pushes in the industry is to better integrate that data. Excellent. Wow. Well, hey, Mark, this has been very educational. I want to thank you very much for, uh, for coming on the program. Before I let you go, we always have to do our I Don't Cook segment. Um, <laughs> I ask all my guests, uh, you know, for restaurant recommendations. You're in D.C. You spend a lot of time in and out of office, you know, federal buildings downtown. Give us a great power lunch place to go in D.C. Where, where do you like to go when you have a very important client uh, uh, or something? I don't cook either. So... <laughs> Uh, DC's got a lot of wonderful restaurants. You know, one of my favorite lunch spots. Uh, coincidentally, on a nice day, it's it's kind of walking distance, so that makes it for me a great perfect as well. Is uh, Founding Farmers, and uh, it's got a great, diverse, unusual menu. There's a lot of healthy choices, but even the healthy choices still taste fantastic. Excellent. I've been to I've been to Founding Farmers. That food is excellent. Give uh, give me and the audience your favorite dish when you go. Oh, I, I love the uh, it's uh, it's the it's the healthy chili, or I forget the exact name they they, they mention. It's like a like a vegetarian chili, or, or whatever it is. But it does not taste healthy. It just tastes like a great great chili. <laughs> so there you go. So you re Mark recommends the chili. One thing I like to get they have this cornbread that's excellent there that I really love. Some some just old school style cornbread, and you get some chili. Founding Farmers, Washington D.C. You gotta love it. Check it out. Mark, thank you for coming on the program. Root for the Wizards tonight, the Washington Wizards in the playoffs. So that, doesn't, that, that, that hardly ever happens. It hasn't happened in six years. So I'm excited. And, uh, you know, Mark, thank you very much for coming on. We really appreciate it here. Uh, this is Rothman Tech Tips. Thank you, Matt.